Okay, this is going to be Trump's lawyers. I'm not going to name them. You wouldn't recognize the names anyway, and there's a lot of them. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Yeah, Trump's lawyers. I mean, you have to think, what are they thinking? You know, now the, the the main one in the news is this guy who was the lawyer for the Venezuelan president um, and had to be paid $3 million in advance or as a retainer, I suppose, uh, before he would sign up. So Trump's lawyers, what are they thinking? I wonder if we can get a group, um, a group read on them or maybe by case or maybe by state. I'm not sure. We'll just kind of decide once to start throwing the cards, which will be right now. Okay, so here we go. This is going to be about the lawyers. Now, I don't have uh, the individual names of all the lawyers. So what I'm going to do instead, let me turn this uh, TV off that's uh, right here or that reflection. Uh, what I'm going to do instead, yeah, is uh, I'm going to focus on the three major cases and uh, and therefore uh, get trapped in focus in on the energy of the lawyers involved in those cases. And uh, so we'll start like that. So this, I think, is the perfect tarot because they're going to have to move heaven and earth to get Trump um, innocent, his lawyers will. And uh, so we'll see if they've got it in them to do that. So the first one the, there's three cases, like I said, I'm going to focus on. The first one is Mar-a-Lago. That's where the uh, Department of Justice for the United States of America uh, um, and the Attorney General Merrick Garland is um, focusing in on the documents that Trump took to Mar-a-Lago, which he could have avoided all of this by turning those documents in the first time he was asked. So why didn't he do that? Isn't there something that he's hiding, that he took, isn't there a crime that he committed that those lawyers have to defend against? Or there's, wouldn't, he, wouldn't he have just given the, the, the stuff back and, and dropped everything? But no, he's fighting like crazy. He's trying to move heaven and earth to, um, to win that. Then the second one is a New York State attorney, and that's um, Letitia James. And so what happened there is she's going civilly, not criminally, but civilly against a Trump organization and therefore Donald and the kids for insurance fraud, banking fraud, and tax fraud. Okay, to the tune of, of almost a billion dollars. But uh, she's asking for 250 million. They feel like it could settle, but well, not settle, but if it, it could cost him up to $750 million or a billion. And then the third one would be, and this might be the most consequential, as a matter of fact, is uh, Georgia, uh, Fulton County. So Fulton County. So the first one is the United States. That's the Mar-a-Lago. The second one is uh, the Attorney General of the State of New York. So that's the State of New York bringing the second one. And the third one is just little Georgia, Fulton, one county in Georgia, Fulton County, and that uh, district attorney, Fonnie Willis, uh, is going to nail him for election interference. And then just as an aside, on that uh, second one in New York, Letitia James is also referring information, uh, which is criminal information, to the federal government and also to the Southern District of New York, uh, Manhattan, uh, Alvin Bragg, district attorney for consideration of prosecution. So, there's all of that. But before we do any of that, let's have a moment of meditation.
Okay. So lots of attorneys to energy to focus in on. So the first one, we'll divide these into three stacks just because it's three uh, different states. One, two, three. And the first one will be for Mar-a-Lago, those attorneys that are defending him in Mar-a-Lago. Now remember, let's do three cards and then six cards. Two, three. Remember, one of those attorneys was uh, the attorney who was uh, defending uh, the regime in Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, being president. Remember, Nicolas Maduro was a bus driver before he was president of, Maduro, of, of Venezuela. And the reason he got to be president of Venezuela is because the former uh, crooked uh, dictator of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, died and named Hugo, who, uh, uh, Nicolas Maduro as his successor. And then uh, this attorney that Trump finally got to work for him by giving him $3 million in advance um, uh, was uh, defending the Maduro regime. So that's the kind of attorney that uh, that Trump has on this one. So this is the Mar uh, uh, this is the uh, Mar-a-Lago case. First card for that attorney or those attorneys is the six of cups. Cups are emotions, compassions. Uh, this is talking about uh, this card defines this uh, this deck defines this card as pleasure, and so cups remembering the way things were in the past. So those attorneys uh, right now are are not looking happily on the situation, the task they have at hand. They wish there was something better like it used to be in the past. Uh, the center card for this then is the Queen of Cups. And again, we're still dealing with compassion and emotion. And the Queen of Cups is uh, absolutely in charge of that. So I wonder if that's a tact they're going to take, some sort of a compassionate uh, tact. And then the last card for those attorneys is the um, Eight of Coins, and that's practicing your craft to get it right. This is called Prudence. So this one here, it seems to me that these attorneys are still looking for exactly the right tack to take on that uh, course there. So the first three cards for the Mar-a-Lago case, his attorneys on the Mar-a-Lago case, what is their focus? We wish things were the way they were. We're going to use compassion and emotion to try to get back to that. And we have really got to get this routine practice, get this, uh, our defense uh, perfected. Now we'll do six cards on the Trump attorneys for Mar-a-Lago. Trump attorneys who are defending him in the Mar-a-Lago. Remember, that's the one where he's up against the United States. He's up against the United States. So let's get six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if there was nothing there, wouldn't, why would he put up such a struggle uh, uh, regarding those documents that he had hidden away at Mar-a-Lago? So remember, this is the one where the corrupt uh, South Florida judge, uh, Eileen Cannon, she uh, decided to try to protect Trump and gave him the special master that he asked for, and it has turned against Trump completely and has turned in favor of the Department of Justice. So the first card for Trump's lawyers regarding this whole Mar-a-Lago uh, case. Signifier card. Okay, so this is the nine of coins. Okay, so his lawyers, the nine of coins, are represented by, the nine of coins is typically, and how do they call this? I can't really read it. Maternal, material gain, material gain. So his lawyers, the definition this deck gives this card, and this is usually the the woman who is just loaded with money. Look at all the pinnacles embedded in the in the uh, garden around her. She's really rich, and so the the signifier card for those lawyers is material gain. I wonder if they might have to take a turn and and all of a sudden have to defend him against whatever material gain he was trying to get by having that secret information. Because they got nothing so far. The challenge to that, 
Remember, we're focusing in on his lawyers for this case against the United States because of the papers that he stole from the White House. The challenge to that is um, the magician. Oh my God. So to, to pull together a good defense for him, they have to be magicians. It has to be magic. The base of this reading then is, uh, what is this card? This is the two of the major arcana, and this is the high priestess. So the base of this whole reading regarding those attorneys who are trying to defend him against the United States government, Department of Justice, Merrick Garland, is the high priestess is the base of all of this. All of this sits on all the knowledge and all the wherewithal the high priestess has. So that's who they're up against, is all of that. The past of this reading for the lawyers of uh, Donald Trump, oh my God, with this nine of swords, swords of truth, justice, rules, and law, and this card is typically just a nightmare. And uh, the, the this deck defines this card as uh, Wow, despair and cruelty. Despair and cruelty. That's in the past, though, for these lawyers of, uh, of Donald Trump. So it looks like they started out with a nightmare. The sky of this reading for the lawyers, well, that's very interesting. So we've got the Ace of Swords, which is truth, justice, rules, and law. And somehow they've got to make this case come up as an ace of truth and justice for their client. And then the final outcome for this so far is this Six of Swords, and that's moving a thing out of troubled water. Moving a thing out of troubled water. Et eternal or earthly earned success. They This deck de defines this card as earned success. Well, this is interesting. I mean, of course this makes sense, um, that they, they, that it reads this way. It looks like, like, just to read it again, before I decide to add any more cards to it, so they start out with a case dealing with uh, the gain, material gain, that their client is trying to achieve by the documents that he had hidden. It's challenged by that they really have to be magicians to get this done, but they have a lot of tools on their on their table to do that. And then it's underscored, it's all uh, uh, held up by the high priestess underneath who is there with truth and justice and, and knowledge and wisdom. Okay, uh, so that's their what they're up against. In the past of this, it just shows how they started out. They started out with a nightmare regarding all those truths all that justice, rules, and law. And in the sky of this, of course, is their aim is to come out as an ace of swords for their client. But the likely outcome is just to move him out of troubled water. Okay, so they've got to reduce this to something that moves him out of troubled water. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do um, four more cards then, now that we've got a clear direction. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to mitigate uh, his culpability. Um, the uh, very self of that question regarding Trump's lawyers is the tower. Wow. Destruction. End of a cycle. Uh, complete, uh, completely, a complete disaster. That's the signifier of this, uh, this draw for these attorneys of Donald Trump. And they're in the environment of what? They're in the environment of death. End of a cycle. Wow. End of a cycle. Death. That's what the environment they're in in trying to get this done for their client. Uh, the hopes and the fears for them, the attorneys of Donald Trump, their hopes and fears, oh my God, it, their hopes and their fears, justice and it's their hope and it's their fear. Wow. I have to say it's more their fear. And then the final outcome for all of this for the attorneys of Donald Trump is the lover's card. That's very interesting. So finding just the perfect partnership. My goodness. Uh, I have to do three more cards just to know, will they find that perfect partnership? Will they be able to move him out of troubled water? Uh, let's just draw one card and see um, if that helps a little bit. The one card we have is the Queen of uh, Wands. The Queen of Wands having a nearly perfect plan. It's not the king. That'd be a perfect plan, but this is the queen of wands. 
doesn't tell us as much as I hoped for, but it certainly does make sense. So just to read it again very quickly, is um, uh, their client was looking for material gain. That's uh, what they start with. And they've got to be magicians to find uh, a defense for him. And it's all uh, hinged on this high priestess who has all the knowledge and all the wherewithal to um, to uh, for, for the other side, for the Department of Justice. And it starts out with them taking this on. It was a complete disaster. It was a nightmare. But they've got to aim for the very best outcome for their client. And it looks like that's going to be simply moving him out of troubled water. Uh, the the um, very significance of that question for them is the tower card, and it's utter failure, you know, uh, starting over. And that's in the environment of the death card, which is the complete end of a cycle. And the hopes and the fears for that has to be the fears is that justice might prevail. And then the uh, likely outcome is that they will find some sort of a per perfect partnership to mitigate this somehow. And then the um, <coughs> kind of a clarifier card for the whole thing with his queen of wands, is having that nearly perfect plan. So he's got a good chance of um, of mitigating, I would say, his uh, damage. Wow. Okay, the next one then, let's go right on to New York, uh, Attorney General Letitia James. Uh, now she is after Trump Organization civilly, not criminally, but civilly, uh, to put that organization out of, out of, you know, to dissolve it and uh, make it, him and his kids never be able to have uh, work in, or in New York again, at least for several years. Um, and um, so let's just see what can the cards tell us about that situation. His lawyers for that New York um, problem uh, with uh, Attorney General for the, for the state... Letitia James. Okay, so let's get, let's go ahead and do six cards for them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is his lawyers uh, who are defending him in this New York uh, problem with Letitia James. His lawyers. The first card up is Strife. The Five of Wands, which is endless, pointless, pointless um, disagreement or arguing. So the, what they have to do is they have to literally light a fire on a lot of uh, confusing, um, misleading um, plans to save their client in this New York situation against insurance, ins uh, banking, and tax fraud. Insurance fraud, banking fraud, tax fraud. The challenge to that is the Fool card. Is Donald Trump the fool? Is that their challenge? Or it's a new journey. They've got to create something out of whole cloth to, to try to come up with an ex explanation for this. A completely new tack. The basis of this for them is this four of wands. And the four of wands are, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And uh, this is um, defined here, perf perfected work. Perfected work. So I always think of these... Um, uh, this card as smaller celebrations on towards something bigger. Okay, this is the something bigger, and this is a small celebration in front. You pass through that laurel wreath of victory onto something bigger. So for the New York case, it looks like um, they've got to win these cases uh, kind of individually: uh, tax fraud, insurance fraud, banking fraud. The pass to this for those attorneys is this uh, material success in the seven of coins, which is typically, is this set? One, two, three, six of coins, which is actually uh, doling out the value. Okay, in the past is where this is. So what they've had to do is they've had to decide regarding the issues that are being brought up here, how to dole out the value, what's most important, and what to tackle first in those accusations, the insurance fraud, the banking fraud, the tax fraud. In the sky of this, with this five, six, seven of swords is an absolute um, uh, theft and betrayal. Okay, th wow, that's the best they can hope for is to prove theft and betrayal. Wow, that's not good. And then the uh, final outcome for this, for that New York case, then, is this knight of swords. Knight of swords. Swords are uh, truth, justice, rules, law. The knight is fighting for that. And so they have to somehow come out as a fighter 
for Donald's made up truth, justice, rules, and law. I'm going to take one more card for this one, just to see if it lends a little more clarity. The attorneys for Donald Trump. What does this say? Uh, and this comes up as a 10 of wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movements. And this is a hard uh, load, a heavy load to carry. But look, it can be done, but it's very precarious. So on the New York case, I guess uh, with uh, Letitia James there, they start out with pointless uh, uh, lighting a fire under pointless actions just to confuse things. And it's under it's um, challenged by The Fool, which is a brand new journey. Okay. Uh, that they have to create out of this, out of whole cloth. It's underpinned by smallish celebrations. It looks like winning piece by piece by piece is how they might get this done. And in the past of it, with this six of coins, is doling out the value to the different parts of this case to understand how much value do we get this piece and this piece and this piece, and how do we argue this case and win it a step at a time. But in the sky of this is theft and betrayal. You know, that, that's what's happened here. And that's the best they can hope to maybe even prove just theft of betrayal. The likely outcome of the whole thing then with this Knight of Swords is that they just go down fighting. That's all it is. And it's going to be a hard, hard pack of actions to carry. But nothing definitive. Sorry. So the last uh, one we're going to deal with is the Fulton County, Georgia. This is Fonnie Willis, the district attorney for Fulton County. She has decided to take on um, this um, voter uh, election interference. This election interference, maybe even fraud, uh, where he wants the guy to find him something over 11,000 votes out of whole cloth. And she says, look, he's lied about this. He has admitted his crime uh, you know, on television, on telephone conversations. So let's get six cards for his attorneys, Donald Trump's attorneys, in the Georgia situation. Donald Trump's attorneys in the Georgia situation. Okay. Let's see what the cards can tell us about that. So far, they have not been definitive in any of these cases. So the Georgia attorneys... Okay, again, it starts out, I love when the cards repeat, because that tells me that they're paying attention to what we're doing. They've learned how I'm going to interpret a card, and so they use that one to help tell the story. So it starts out with a signified card of this nine of coins, this nine of pentacles, of, um, let's see, of... And this one is where he's trying to win. He's trying to gather all the votes that he can. So they start out to try to prove that he's entitled to all of that value, all of those votes. The uh, challenge to that then is temperance. Okay, Major Arcana, uh, this is finding that perfect emotional uh, balance. And then the base of this reading for that Georgia um, uh, election interference, where he's trying to get all those votes, is the base of this is the hermit. Really, really taking this step at a time before you put a foot forward. In the past of this, with this, again, the cards repeat with this high priestess. In the past of this, so somehow in the past we have all of that knowledge that the high priestess carries. So it starts out, ah, so what a, a difficult way to start out because they've got to step on the high priestess who has all the knowledge and all the, all the for wherewithal to get this thing done. That's Fonnie Willis. In the sky of this one, we have wealth. And this is the Ten of Coins. <coughs> Perfect for this one. Because we're talking about familial wealth here, familial value that would go on for generation and generation and generation. And um, that's what's in the sky of this. That's what they try to have to hope for. I guess they're trying looking for um, that generation generational value in um, the uh, cred credibility of elections. And then the likely outcome with this Queen of Wands is, again, finding that perfect, perfect plan to get it done. And will they? One more card. Will they? <coughs> will his attorneys find the perfect plan? Five, six, seven, eight of cups? No. We're left here wishing things uh, were uh, when they were. When they, this is actually having to walk away from something of emotional value. So, no, they're not going to win that one. Very, very interesting. 
I wouldn't want to be any one of them. So Trump's lawyers, that's what we got. We'll see how the cases pan out. And uh, I think everything's uh, headed to a head. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. So this is the Heaven and Earth Tarot by Jack Sifroth and Jamie L. Ford. And uh, these are Los Scarabio cards. And I got to tell you, these are great. Um, they come in a cool box with that magnetic clip on the side, which I like. The guidebook that there that comes with them is very useful. It's just a full size book that you could uh, sit and have a cup of tea and and read through it. The cards themselves, and it's a color book, which I appreciate. It may not look like these are in color, but this is how the cards are kind of muted with little pops of color here and there. And there's lots of nice suggestions on how you might use these cards uh, in uh, the divinations. And then the cards themselves are, are very nice. The, um, I've not put them in the box well. The little discombobulated uh, here today. Um, I want to spread them out so that you can get a look at them and see kind of what cards look like. And although they're kind of, uh, and in that noir style where they're black and whitish with just some hints of a uh, of very uh, shaded uh, color here and there um, you can see that they're gorgeous cards to use and um, so very nice uh, I do this so that uh, if you don't look at cards very often then you can uh, have a look at almost this whole deck you know because you can stop the tape and really zoom in on some of this stuff if you wanted to and uh, it's a nice way to mix the cards. If you're doing a reading for someone, you could have them uh, spread them out this way to kind of uh, get the cards mixed up. And um, that way uh, everybody's kind of participating in the process. So that's the Heaven and Earth Tarot. Some cards that I love, love, love using. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.